Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And as you saw on the thumbnails, we're taking a look at the Piglet. QS112 by QSP Knives. This is a very, very fun knife. I've been playing with this thing for so long. I've been wanting to do the review for quite a while. I just noticed today that uh, Justin over on White Mountain Knives has got this in stock again. He's actually got all three versions of this in stock, or two versions, <laughs> three knives in stock. And uh, I wanted you to be able to get them from him because he's got the best price going, especially when you consider the 10% off when you use coupon code CCE for Canadian Cutting Edge. The uh, This knife is not that expensive. It's a good knife three inch blade, but you can spend, you know, a lot more money, $288 if you want the high end version of this. It's got a super, I think it's called the Raffier uh, handle scales. It's like a clear epoxy with a floating mesh of copper pieces in there and um, bronze pieces in there. I saw that material for the first time at Blade Show in the end of spring, early summer. And it looks so good in person, but I don't have $288, but I do have enough money for this knife and you might too. And if you're looking for a knife roughly this size, that is super comfortable in hand and very easy and efficient to use. And I like it. <laughs> you might want to watch this video and share it with your friends. Click on the, uh, subscribe button and on the bell so you'll be notified of future videos because here comes this guy right now. All right, I like to start off with a size comparison. Here is the Ontario Rat 1 and as you can see it's quite a bit bigger than the Piglet but the depth of the blade is very much the same and uh it's a good knife. The handle size other than length, very similar. It's a good knife for, it's a good knife in terms of how it feels in the hand and how comfortable it is. Uh, I'd like to talk about all the details of this thing. The blade shape is sort of like a spear point shape. The spine and the cutting edge don't quite come to a point at the same spot. It would be, you know, just a little bit further on this side if it did but you know, we've got a nice drop point, full flat grind, 14C 28N stainless steel, which is a good steel. It's like a step above budget, but at a budget price. Thumb stud deployment. We've got a sharpener's toil that's perfect. The grind on here is pretty good. Um, well, for, it's actually quite good. Um, the handle scales are two types of G10. You've got a main base, you can see it on this edge here, you got a main base of black and then they glued on or adhered somehow <laughs> this tan color here or you can get it with green. And those are the two choices in G10. And now I'm going to show you a picture of the uh, expensive raffier kind. Isn't that beautiful? That is a beautiful, beautiful knife. Uh, so this guy uh, has got a first finger choil, and then you've got this handle part back here, little lanyard hole. The uh, handle scales are inset just a little bit from the liners, so the liners are a little bit proud. This is very, very comfortable in hand. Like a, any grip you want to have feels very good, at least for me. Uh, and my hands are between large and extra large. 10 and 11 in European sizes, and it just works very well. We've got um, a pocket clip that's right side only. That's one of the things I wish they'd change on this. Uh, not super deep carry, but not super terrible. We've got, actually I'll show it with a pair of pants very soon. See, it's less than an inch sticking out of the pocket, about three quarters of an inch sticking out of the pocket. And let's demonstrate that. So here you go, that's how it sits in the pocket. It sits quite nicely. It's not super uh, flashy or anything. It holds on well and it's a good pocket clip. Could there be a better pocket clip? 
I am sure that it could be, but this one's not bad. If you're right-handed, you're probably pretty happy. If you're left-handed, you're not uh, so happy. You're a little disappointed that there's not a left-hand pocket clip. I grew up left-handed, but I became quite ambidextrous. In fact, I'm a little bit better now with my right hand with most knives than I am with my left. Now look at that snappy action. Isn't that great? This thing's got awesome, awesome action. How does it get such good action? Well, it's got nicely polished copper washers. Yes, does not have ball bearings. It has washers. It's got a good detent, good liner lock. Lockup is exactly where I want a brand new knife to be. Blade alignment is almost perfect. Not bad at all. Quite good. The thumb studs have enough traction on there so that it's very easy to deploy that blade. Easy to get your thumb anywhere on there and you're able to flick that thing open no problem. No blade play, side to side, up and down. Very solid lockup. The uh, backspacers are that little hourglass shape, open pillar. Some skeletonizing in there. Well, let me show you the insides of the knife right now. As you can see, it's highly skeletonized and we've got phosphor bronze washers, or they say copper washers actually in the uh, description. And uh, there's two washers on each side, two bigger ones on that side and two small ones on this side, which means we've got the washer rubbing on the washer, which is why the action is so pick and smooth, beautiful knife. Well made. You don't need ball bearings to have really good action. You just have to have good washers and then a good setup. Along with this good steel, I'm really liking this knife. We've got T8 screws and T6 screws here. And uh, it's a very easy knife to work with and a very fun to use. It's an excellent EDC choice. Um, you know, if you're a guy like Kevin Cleary, this is way too small for you. But if you live in a jurisdiction where three inch knives are uh, mandated three inches or less, uh, that's what, about 7.6 centimeters, then this guy might be what you want. But I measured it with my vernier calipers, and this guy is 3.04 inches. Oh, oh, ever so tiny, tiny too much. But uh, if you're somewhere where they're super, super picky, it wouldn't be that hard to make this, you know, just make that drop point come down just a tiny bit more. And uh, that's a very, very... It's a very, very small modification, but it's something that not everybody can do. Just before I go into the various specs, look at that liner lock release. So it's got a little bit of uh, milling on there so that you're always going to uh, get good traction on that. It's not going to be hard uh, to uh, disengage that lock. You're... Um, not going to accidentally slip easy on it. I was thinking at the same time as I was trying to flip, so that was why that didn't work. Uh, but uh, so the lockup and the disengaging of the lock is very, very nice. The only sharp edges anywhere are the ones that you want, and that's a very, very good thing. Let's go over all of the dimensions and those kind of specs, and once this is no longer on the screen, I'll be finished that section of the video. 100 grams, 3.05 ounces, sorry, 3.5 ounces, three and a half ounces. Uh, on the sharpness scale, this is 150 best, which is very good. 200 is considered sharp, smaller is better. So 150, not bad at all. The cutting edge here is just under 7.7 .7 centimeters, three inches. And the blade length itself is 7.73 centimeters, which is 3.04 inches. Uh, three inches. Uh, the blade thickness is 3.3 millimeters, which is 0.131 inches. The blade depth, and I usually measure it about an inch up from the sharpener's toil, 2.6 centimeters, 1.03 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind is 0.48 millimeters, which is 0 0.019 inches. Perfect. I like to go for about half a millimeter thick behind the grind, and that is very close to exactly that. A little bit less with 14C20N, not a problem at all. Uh, this could be 0.35 millimeters thick and 
it would be durable enough to use for uh, most EDC tasks. The grind angle in the sky is 21 degrees on this side and 23.8 degrees on this side. Not bad for hand sharpening. The handle length is 10.2 centimeters, 4 inches. The grip area is just over 9 centimeters, about 3.6 inches. The handle thickness is about a centimeter and a half, which is 0.597. So it's a little bit chubby, but that's why they call it piglet. Uh, but it's not so chubby that it's bad at all. Uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 inches are totally fine for most people as far as the grip goes. The uh, handle depth, it's largest right there, 2.75 centimeters, 1.08 of an inch. And when the knife is closed, uh, the widest spot is right here, 3.07 centimeters, 1.21 inches. And the total length of the knife when the blade is deployed is 18.1 centimeters, seven and an eighth inches. Very, very nice. How much does this thing cost? Well, it's $42.66 at White Mountain Knives, but you can save 10% on with coupon code CCE. And uh, pretty much everywhere else you're going to look, it's that same $42.66. So why not go to White Mountain Knives? Every time I've had White Mountain Knives uh, deliver knives to me directly in Canada, they've come through. Uh, so if you're a Canadian, you know, it's not guaranteed that yours will be come through uh, past CBSA, but the odds are quite high uh, because Justin um, just does a good job with shipping. So there's that. The I don't have other prices. I did find that in Australia, I found a price that was $62.95 Australian dollars. That's at Neba Knives. Heine Haynes has this for uh, 37.95 British pounds. So, um, fit and finish is very good. Uh, there's no space or anything between here. They, you know, everything's done well. You know, nice rounded grind on here on the G10. Uh, the blade is done very, very well. It's a good looking knife. The thumb studs for deployment are awesome. It's got a good weight and it's very EDCable. I've carried this thing quite a lot. What are the cons on here? Well, the cons basically are for me uh, having to do with the pocket clip. I would like a little deeper carry and I would definitely like right and left pocket clips. And I would like this blade to be just a tiny bit smaller so that it would clearly and, and most definitely be under that three inch limit that some jurisdiction has. Uh, so, you know, that's I got a lot of friends that live in places where three inches is the law, and if you got a knife that's just at that line, it can be a problem. So, uh, QSP, and if any other knife manufacturers are watching, um, if you're making a knife that's near three inches, please consider making it, you know, about two and seven eighths of an inch, something like that, and uh, for the blade length, just to be on the safe side. I didn't talk much about the lanyard hole. The lanyard hole is nice. The, the placement of it is good. And, you know, it's clearly in place. I don't use lanyard holes for EDC knives, folding knives, generally speaking. The grind on this blade is very well done. The grind lines are nice and light, not really super distinct lines or anything. I like it like this. I also like stone wash. This knife could do well either way. Um, you know, the QSP is, you know, not in your face. It's just a nice small logo on there. And right here is where it's got the steel type listed, the 14C28N. And that's all the writing you're going to find on this knife. If you're looking for a knife that's something like this, don't let the uh, washer scare you off. If you're new to folding knives uh, within the last two years, you might think that every knife is supposed to have ball bearings, but as little as three years ago, ball bearings were actually quite uncommon, especially on budget price knives. Anything under a hundred dollars, you know, it had washers. It's just the way it was. Most knives under two hundred dollars just had washers. I remember talking when ball bearings first came out. You know, there's some manufacturers do custom knives. Five thousand dollar knives have washers. You know, some of them even nylon washers, and uh, if you've been with my channel for a long time, you remember me talking about that several years ago. 
And so there's nothing at all wrong with washers, especially when they're put in correctly and well done. And these have very smooth action. You know, I can shake the knife down and uh, deployment smooth, fast, works great. And that's partly to do with great washers and partly to do with a very good detent. So there you go. That's the detent at work again. Just at the end. Thanks for watching my video. Please leave comments down below. I read all the comments. I don't necessarily respond to the comments, partly because uh, of an injury ahead of my arm that affects my hands. It makes it hard for me to type. I have to do the hunt and peck type with one hand now, and that just, unfortunately, it just eats a lot of my time up. If you definitely want to talk to me and you want to communicate with me, email me at CanadianCuttingEdge at gmail.com, and I'd be happy to communicate with you. Thanks for watching my video. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum. That's an old English word. Not English as in from England, but an old word in English for friend, buddy, pal. Of course, they might have been using it in the United Kingdom as well for that. Of course, I think it's got the same meaning all over the place. But cut towards your chum, that is, not your thumb. Because you don't like having bleeding parts. At least I don't. Bye for now.